So what if you're working with force diagrams and you're given a set of equations for the forces and you need to construct the force diagram from those equations? And again, you're doing this generally because you want to have a visualization, a picture of what's happening in your mind. So let's just start off with, say, a set of equations where you have the sum of the forces of x and the sum of the forces of y. And we can randomly put down some F1, F2, F3, F4, okay? And in your equations, there's going to be various plus and minus signs. This is a really simple one, so we'll start with this one first. Well, again, I start with a box for my object just so I can keep track of what's going on. Start with one of the two equations, so maybe your FX equation recognize that what this means is these forces are either left or right with right being the positive direction and left being the negative direction. So from this equation the first thing in there is and the x equation is minus F1. So that means we would come over here and add our F1 in the negative direction. F2 is listed in the positive direction in x so our F2 would be over here on this side. From our Fy set of equations, that's up and down, we've got plus F3, plus is going to be in the upwards direction, and then negative F4 means that's going to be in the downward direction. So once we've got our equations, in this case they were given to us, we can construct a diagram to visualize which direction all of those forces are in. Let's get a little bit more complicated one. Let's say for this case we've got plus F1 minus F2, but then we've got a third force that shows up in both equations. If we take a look at what these equations would say, well, F1 is just in the positive x direction, so we can draw that one in here really easily. F2 is in the negative y direction, so that's going to come in here and go in that place really well. When we start looking at the F3, there's an x part and a y part. Now, you can do this in a couple of ways. If you're really, really good with quadrants, you simply look and say, okay, if I'm in the plus x and negative y, that means I'm going to be over here in that quadrant, so that's where my F3 has got to be. If you're still a little shaky on those things, what you can do is temporarily come in here and draw in your components separately and then figure out what the arrow would be. So when we have plus F3x, that means it's over there to the right minus F3y means it's in the downward direction. And again, you see from those two components, we would have something drawn off at an arrow. 